I was cursed by a drunk man and ordained by God. That's who I am. A drunk man identified me and my people because God had ordained them. They saw that there were some people who would stand for righteousness. We've been cursed by a drunk man. Be your guide. But if your money be your leader, then your power. calling yourself a spiritual Canaanite or the grandson of Ham. You've been associating yourself with Melchizedek and Canaan. And people don't understand that because Canaan in the Bible was cursed. Ham's son, Canaan, was cursed. Well, my answer to them is this. Abraham was guided by the stars that those who wish to deny Abraham's heritage as a stargazer call that guidance God who sent Abraham to Canaan. Well, on Abraham's journey, he ran into a Canaanite, the priest and king of Salem, the original Salem. Now, this land is cursed. However, those people who were in the land were blessed before Israel even existed. They are the ones who set up the original priesthood. The story of Aaron being a priest wouldn't even have meaning if they would not have understood the priesthood from Melchizedek. You know, today we have a lot of people attempting to assimilate themselves with people who don't even consider them as significant people. It's amazing how we try our hardest to establish our significance to those who see us as insignificant. We call ourselves Hebrew Israelites and Muslim and Arabs and we go out and attempt to learn Arabic and at the same time we deny our original heritage and religion, not religion, but spirituality. So you've heard me call myself a Canaanite or a spiritual Canaanite, and you say, that's why people are not watching my videos. Well, that's okay, because this would not be the first time that those who stand for justice, those who stood for justice and truth, 
this wouldn't be the first time that they were denied and ostracized and cast out and even cursed. You know, I wish that you would have figured this out on your own. And since you didn't, I'll tell you why I call myself a spiritual Canaanite, a descendant of Ham and a follower of Melchizedek. I'll tell you why. Because the first will be last and the last will be first and the greatest among you will be your servant. And we don't understand the blessing from the curse. You see, the enemy is a liar and whomever the enemy curses is actually blessed. In the Bible that we hold dear to us, We've forgotten about these stories that teaches that Jacob got drunk as he was looking for a wife. He got drunk and he slept with the eldest sister before he slept with the one he really wanted. And that created chaos in his life. He got drunk. We're thinking about that physical boo something you pour in a glass, he got drunk. We've also forgotten about Lot, who his daughters got him drunk, and lay, they laid down and had sex with him and had babies by him. They got him drunk. Oftentimes, when people stand for justice and truth and knowledge and understanding those who are seeking to understand the truth so that they can align themselves with truth, often they are accused as being wicked by a drunk man. And you believe that I'm talking about somebody who has lifted a cup to his mouth and it has some liquid in it that intoxicates his mind. Well, you can keep on believing that I'm talking about a cup of liquor that gets the man drunk. You can go ahead and keep on believing that. But I know that there's some people out here who have found themselves in a situation and little girls and little boys, you found yourselves in a situation where you have been touched by a hand that should have been protecting you. You were touched in a way that didn't feel so good. You've been preyed upon by someone who should have been praying for you. So if Lot can get drunk and commit a sinful sexual act, we're talking about incest. No matter what book is written in, we're talking about incest. Well, Jacob was so drunk that he didn't have any intention of sleeping with both sisters. They tricked him and he ended up sleeping with the older sister, the mother of Reuben. And it messed up all types of generations going forward. We don't even know who the firstborn and who should have gotten the blessing. And it was because that man was drunk. And we continue to allow drunk men to curse righteous men. And so this little girl and little boy who should have been prayed for, they were prayed upon and they were touched by some hands of a predator. And now in a perfect world, that little child, everybody in the family would have come to that child's rescue but they told that little girl that this wouldn't have happened to you if you weren't so fast. Look at you. This is why you did that. That's why that happened to you because you a fast little girl. You always stand up in the face of grown people and you ought to, when grown people come over, you need to go upstairs. You shouldn't be twisting and turning all around and tempting your uncle, James. And so everybody is frowning at me because I say that I'm a Canaanite. 
Because I understand where I come from. I understand my inheritance. I understand my ethnicity. And I'm proud of it. Just because you say a drunk man curse me, that doesn't mean that I'm under a curse. A drunk man can't curse me. So Jacob and Lot, they committed these unnatural acts and blamed it on alcohol. And we then forget about Noah's act. What did Ham do that was so terrible to Noah that he had to be cursed? I'm talking about hands that pray and then those who are the victim becomes the family's curse. Why? Because you have people in the family who's willing to cover that up for the good of the entire family. We have people who will cover that unnatural act up. Ham gazed at his father's nakedness. And that was enough for his brothers to turn around Look at who we associate ourselves with. We rather associate ourselves and being known by the ones who cover up sin rather than those who expose sin. We have been perverted. And now it doesn't make sense that I would call myself a Canaanite. The greatest among you will be your servant. Those who the enemy curse will be blessed. Those who speak a curse against God's children, it won't prosper. When your enemy tells you that you are cursed, you better believe you are blessed. What do you think? You see, we forget that we're dealing with humans, even back then at the time of the flood, we were dealing with humans. Ask yourself, what did Noah do to Ham that caused Ham, who was possibly a victim of this man's drunkenness, to save the family? You know any little boys and girls who were labeled negatively, labeled with a marred character because they stood for justice, because all they wanted was justice. All I want is to be treated fairly. This is what happened to me and I spoke out and I told somebody. And now I'm the black sheep of the family because I didn't protect the family's integrity. I'm the black sheep now, not the one who touched me. I'm proud to be a Canaanite. I'm the spiritual son of Ham. How many people are in jail today because they said, well, I was drunk and I didn't know what I was doing. I was out of my mind. And they woke up sober with charges facing them. I was under the influence. I did it because I was under the influence. How many times have you heard of somebody who was raped and then the perpetrator says the person wanted it? That man or woman or child wanted it. It wasn't me. I didn't have anything to do with it. It wasn't me, I never would have done anything like that if that person hadn't taunted me or tempted me. I want to know how is it that we can make incest righteous? Did we ask those two sisters, did you want to lie down with Lot, your daddy, or is that something your daddy told you that could be portrayed as righteousness? 
How many ministers do we know? I, I'm talking about right now. I don't want you to have to live in the past. I'm talking about right now. How many so-called saviors and gurus and ministers and preachers and bishops are in prison right now for laying down with little girls and telling their family, convincing their families that this is what God wanted. God wants you to give me your little child. God wants you to give me your child as a sacrifice. And we then turn a blind eye to the fact that a crime happened in Lot's day. And we just listen to those who give us the story or who gave us the story. We just say, okay, well, it must be righteous because they said God was okay with it. Was he? Which God was okay with that? It's time for those who want to stand for truth and justice to stop being afraid to stand for what is right. It's time for us to face the truth. And if that's what makes me your enemy, then you have an enemy for life. Did we even stop to ask Hagar if she wanted to be Abraham's wife? Did she have a say in being his concubine? How can you make that right? You impose yourself upon your slave. I want you to listen to this. You take a slave and say, you don't have no say. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to have a baby for the king. You, you will be used as a surrogate mother in a sense. You have no say so of your own body. We going through that right now. That is a huge debate. Women's voice over their body. The right of a woman to say what happens to her body. We are going through that right now. And we've forgotten about Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. We brushed that under the rug because... It's in the Bible and somebody said God agreed with that. I wonder if we all going to be judged one day because of what we have associated with God falsely. What God do we believe in who said that that type of behavior is okay back then and now it is of the vilest class of wickedness. So yeah, I'm a spiritual Canaanite in the order of Melchizedek. You better stop being fooled by some people who can pronounce the names of God, names given to God by man. You better stop listening to everybody who said God said and start finding out for yourself what God really said. You listen to a man who knows the superficial or the intellectual's name for God. Those who can pronounce syllables. And there you go who don't even understand the meaning. You quick to call God by the name that they give you. You don't even know which God you serve. You better check the record first before you sit down and eat with certain people and say that their God is your God. Which God? Hold on, wait a minute. You say you love God. Let's talk about the God that you're talking about. Share with me which God. And then after I understand where you're coming from with your God, then we can talk because my God, I want you to listen to this. 
my God is the defender of those who have been persecuted. My God is the God of the fatherless. But I ask these people which God they're talking about or which God they have shared with you. 